today we're going to be replacing a ridge vent as you can see this ridge vent has several places where it's dipped in uh, looks like somebody probably walked on it at one point and pressed it down and so these little bowls here are actually creating leaking when it rains and so we're going to take off this old vent and install a new one that is properly pitched for the water to drain so the first thing to do is to take off the old and so determine where the edge of the vent starts This tool is called a nail bar and it's absolutely critical for doing any sort of roof repair to have one of these because it is able to separate and lift shingles in a proper manner and really with any other tool you're going to have a hard time accomplishing what you're trying to get done. And as I begin to expose this, we can see what the problem is. Uh, this is a style of ridge vent that's really not used very much anymore where it's just this rolled mesh. Uh, you'll see in a few minutes when we start to install the new, there's actually a hard plastic ridge vent that you can put on uh, that not only is more rigid and will prevent things like that from happening, uh, but also actually ventilates the roof better. And so, just gonna have to get all of this old junk off and out of the way when you're tearing off old stuff there's not always a particular method that's going to work best just kind of play it by ear from situation to situation uh, if this was actually a plastic ridge vent it would be easier to be taking off the vent and the shingles together at the same time You can see that attempts have been made to fix this with caulking. But, uh, there are some situations where caulking is called for, but in general, you're going to be a lot better off in the long run to go ahead and fix whatever the problem is, rather than just trying to caulk over the situation. Okay, so now we got the shingles out of the way. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and start pulling all of these nails. They have to come out eventually anyway. Pulling them now will make getting the mesh out much easier.
hopefully my camera is catching all of this properly um, I've only had my GoPros for about a month and a half now so I'm still learning how to properly set them up and get the angles right all that sort of thing I did not take my camera inside the house with me, uh, but this ridge vent was producing significant leaking where there was about a eight foot stretch of the ceiling uh, that had been completely saturated. So this wasn't causing just a small drip. Uh, it was actually a rather major situation where all of these little dips were just drawing the water into the house And you can see these old nails have this plastic on the top of them and the reason for that was to act as a spacer when you're installing this ridge vent so that you don't drive the nail actually through the shingle so from that aspect this product was well made but obviously in this situation they would have been far better off just starting off with a hardened plastic type ridge vent up until I guess it was maybe the late 80s or early 90s the only style of ridge vent was just a aluminum ridge vent where it was an exposed 10 foot stick of aluminum and uh, you'll still find those on a lot of houses and in fact they still manufacture them and sell them uh, but they are a greatly inferior product because they are so prone to leaking and they also do not ventilate the house nearly as efficiently and they do not look as attractive uh, because they don't have a shingle helping them to blend in with the roof so i would strongly advise against ever installing those 10 foot aluminum, aluminum ridge vents on your house and would encourage you that if you do have them uh, that if the first sign of leaking go ahead and switch those things out to a more high quality ridge vent These ridge vents are one of those things that are not going to cost you a ton of money um, material wise uh, at least here in the georgia area they tend to run with tax about two dollars and fifty cents a foot okay this structure is built with these prefab trusses 
which means there's not a ridge beam running along the center uh, like you would find with a stick framed house um, this gap is a little wider than would be optimal uh, you really want about like this side is about two inches off center if you have the ridge beam i believe it calls for an inch to an inch and a half off the edge of that ridge beam i'll have to double check the manufacturer specs on that um, i've done this work for so long now that a lot of it i just do based on my knowledge uh, rather than any specs from the manufacturer and so i tend to forget uh, what the actual numbers call for i just know that in general i'm doing it within manufacturer specifications Now I'm finish cleaning up these edges. Okay, so first thing I want to check is because that gap is so wide, I want to make sure that the new ridge vent is actually going to have enough wood there to nail into and so you see on this ridge vent you have the uh, center line going down and you want when you install the ridge vent to uh, make sure to push it up where it's peaked so that the water does draw off and we don't have a recurrence of that situation like we had uh, going on originally here you can see that right right here is the the nail line for the new shingles and that's right on the edge of the decking so in this case i'll be able to shift this just about a quarter inch off center uh, which they do have a little bit of leeway and uh, that'll give me enough to nail into and the other factor i want to consider is the opening of the ridge vent here to make sure that in a driving rain water couldn't be pushed through sideways and be able to get up to the opening <clears throat> one last factor when you're replacing ridge vent is we now have all of these holes from the old ridge vent uh, that need to be dealt with and uh, that can be done by caulking uh, which is the not as good because once again caulking can fail over time or replacing the shingles and since i need to come up just a little bit higher to make sure no water can blow in through this i'm going to add another row of shingles and just extend them up a short ways there just to give me a little additional safety factor so that's going to be the first thing to accomplish is getting those shingles in place okay so about to add these shingles my goal is first of all cover up these holes and then extend it a little bit past the edge of the wood just to make sure nothing blows in and so gonna set it at about that height all the way across so get that back out of the way and roof repair I guess a good term would be non-standard um, 
because you you never really know what situation you're going to be dealing with on any given repair sometimes you do non-standard yeah you know, the the standard thing on this would be for this decking to come up another inch and a half to two inches and then uh, just be able to actually replace that one tab going all the way across uh, because of this situation where the decking's cut back further than expected can either go to the expense of uh, taking out about three or four more runs of shingles cutting out the decking and putting in a, a larger piece because uh, you, you can't just put in a, a two inch strip of decking across here because that's so weak that it's just going to break when you try to nail your new nails through it so you'd actually have to to bring off several runs of shingles cut the decking and then put in a new piece of decking and uh, you know things like that become more and more expensive as you do more and more of them and uh so i end up in roof repairs doing uh, just a lot of non-standard things like adding these tabs across here you know this doing something like this is not something you're ever going to read in a manufacturer's how-to manual this is just years of being out here doing this and knowing that this is going to be effective in getting the job done and of course you know the the optimum thing would be to take those shingles off and put in new decking and all that but again trying to save the homeowner some money because this roof is somewhat old it's only going to last probably another three or four years at the absolute most and so no point in pouring more money than necessary into this existing roof do what it takes to keep the water out for the rest of the life of the roof and go from there Yeah, I would like to do things the optimum way every time uh, but I feel like that's part of my responsibility as a company owner is to look out for the best interest of my customer you know, if this roof was only two years old and had another 15 years of life left in it we'd be tearing the shingles off and replacing the decking and all that sort of thing so there's a art and a balance involved in doing roof repair I'm gonna stop right there because I've actually got a, a a shingle with a hole in it there that need to replace and so before I start covering that up with some kind of new material let me go ahead and take care of that and because this shingle is so close to the top it's easier just to go ahead and take out everything from this point down see here why this nail bar is so valuable you're able to get those nails out and able to separate the shingles so all these shingles have a tar line across them that's sealing the row above to this shingle and uh, depending on the age of the roof those tar lines can be exceedingly difficult to get apart especially when the shingles start getting hot Fortunately, pretty simple when it's cool outside. 
but I just I use the nail bar to slide underneath the edge and you you, you start developing a feel uh, for that you know the first time you try it you're not gonna be able to just separate a shingle quite as easily as it looks like I'm doing right now but definitely a must for doing roof repair and you can pick one of these up at any big box home improvement store for less than ten dollars so not a major investment for something that's going to make your life a whole lot easier all right so i want to go ahead and put the new shingles back in Matching shingle colors can be a difficulty, especially on a roof this old. Because these shingles were actually a black shingle that is faded. So you can, you can see right here, that's the original color of this roof. Uh, but they're so faded that at this point, these gray shingles are actually going to match more closely than a black shingle would. Obviously, it's nowhere even close to a perfect blend. But it is. The best that I could do for today. That first shingle you could see is having difficulty getting the nail in, and that's because there's a plywood seam somewhere close to there running across this way, which makes the wood weaker in that area. Cut this off at about the same height as that shingle running across there. Okay.
Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is you're always going to have shingles that are over the ridge up to the point that you start the ridge vent. And I'm installing 16 feet of ridge vent today, which I want to get approximately centered. Uh, so I want to measure the length that I have here. And uh, each one of these tabs is exactly 12 inches long. And so rather than getting a tape measure, I can just count these. So it's approximately 20 feet long. Uh, so I've got 16 feet of ridge vent and I want those shingles to run underneath the ridge vent for at least six inches. Uh, so you have 20 feet minus the 16 feet leaves you four feet and then add in a half foot at each end means five feet. Uh, so I want two and a half feet of ridge cap here and down there. Um, and these old caps are so torn up if those are in good shape, you can actually uh, just re-go with those, but these are so bad. You can go ahead and replace them. Each one of these ridge caps, if you're using just a standard shingle, is going to be about five inches long. So two and a half feet is 29 inches. So we're going to put six pieces of ridge cap on each end to get started. Okay, so we've got this style of shingle that is called a three tab shingle. And that's because each shingle consists of three tabs, which are one foot long each. And then these are called eyelets where it's cut open. And so from the top of the eyelet to the bottom of the eyelet, that's the part of the shingle that will actually be exposed. And so, unless you're using a pre-made specialty ridge cap, this is the type of shingle that you'll make your ridge caps from. The way you do that, first you got your knife, has a hook blade on it, a straight blade is going to do you no good with shingles. So you take your hook blade, and because I'm right-handed, I'll start on the right-hand side, uh, but you can see right here, even on the end, that there's an end cut for an eyelet. So I want to go to the top of that eyelet, right where the, uh, in this case, the color changes. Some shingles will be the same color all the way up. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to just cut in at a slight angle. The uh, exact angle isn't important. You just want to make sure that you uh, cut it inward uh, at least slightly so that when we put the shingles on, this part of the shingle will not be exposed. Okay, so I've cut that one. Now I'm going to come to this eyelet and cut inward toward the center of this tab. And now I have a ridge cap shingle. And so then I can come to the top of this eyelet and again, angle toward the center of each tab. So the same thing on this eyelet. And then one more time on this and again you can see slight indentation and in where that curvature ends so there we have three ridge caps and i said we need six for each end uh, 
So you can conti continue cutting like that or to speed up your time, you can actually make several cuts at one time in one area and then come to the next spot If you can get where that hook of the knife is only catching one shingle rather than trying to cut through two or more at a time, it makes this really simple. And that's just a matter of learning the feel of just grabbing that one piece of shingle. Okay, that's more than enough to do my ends. So let's go ahead and get those put on. So grab six for down here. So we'll make sure don't leave any of these nail heads sticking up because when it gets hot and these shingles get super flexible those nail heads will actually come all the way through a shingle and create a leak so they've got those nails actually nailed into no wood whatsoever which is why those are sticking up that's one thing about doing repairs is you can't go back and make everything perfect because you're just going to end up putting a full roof on every house you climb on because everything you uncover is going to reveal something else that's not quite standard. Okay, so I'm folding this over the ridge and if you feel the top edge of your shingle, you'll see there's a little cut in the top edge and that's the center point of that shingle and so I'm just visually aligning that approximately where the center of this ridge is in order you, you can actually pop a chalk line to get it a hundred percent precise um, especially if you're doing a longer run but for doing just these six shingles I know that I'll be able to get it okay so now I want to make sure I cover up all the way up to where the uh, the color of the shingle is and again I can check that cut and see that it's still lined up if you are hand nailing and setting these nails to the right depth then one nail is all the manufacturer calls for in each ridge cap as long as you're not hitting the the uh, head of the nail through the shingle one nail is sufficient to hold these and you can really nail on on the ridge caps on either side of the tar line but you don't want to nail into the tar line uh, because that's what you're counting on to seal these shingles together Okay, and so this is the sixth shingle. Rather than just putting it on hole like that, uh, we know the ridge vent's gonna start two feet out, which is approximately um, about right here. 
and so we're going to have ridge vent actually across there uh, but we want to maximize how much open air space we have for the hot air to eject from the attic so this shingle we can just cut off right at the edge of the tar line so that we're not covering up that much more air space go down and do the same thing at the other end And because this gap is so wide, we just want to make sure we keep these shingles where they're pushing upwards just a little bit and make sure that we don't have any downward pressure there in the center trying to create a new problem with these shingles. If I was actually replacing this whole roof, I would 100% for sure cut that decking off and add a new piece there at the top. That's inexpensive and simple to do when you've got the whole roof torn off anyway. Whereas in a repair situation, that's going to be rather involved and expensive. Once again, trim this shingle off to maximize that airflow. Okay, so theoretically now we've got everything set up to actually be able to put the ridge vent themselves on. couple of things to notice when you start to install the ridge vent this is the uh, Cobra brand and you can see down here there's a little lip that extends over and on this end there's an indentation those are made for the ridge vent to actually overlap and lock into itself 
and so whichever direction you're running you want the farthest end to have this indentation down so that when you set the next one on it will go on top of that and so and so we needed two feet of uh, uh, in space here so there's one two so right about here is where this ridge vent's going to start again here's the center line and so we want to uh, set it on the center line except if you'll remember we're going to shift this one over just about a quarter inch just to give us a little bit more wood to nail into so going to go off center just a little bit and you'll notice that uh, this comes with the nails set very conveniently for you right there okay you can see you have these pre-drilled holes that are for setting the vent itself into place and so we're going to come on this first side set that in the one corner make sure we're still properly lined up now rather than just pressing this down and nailing it we want to actually push in toward the center just a little bit to uh, raise that up just a, a touch more rather than pushing it just as hard as we can against the roof that's going to make all of this line up much more easily and so now we're going to come here to the other side and again we're about a quarter inch off center on purpose set one nail come to the other side so you can see if i just push down that's actually trying to stay up off of the roof but if we push it up to give it a little bit of tension going up the slope of the roof then it fits down nice and and uh flush to the roof um in some situations i go ahead and put a nail in every one of those uh, most of the time unless the vent's just trying to shift i'll do one more in the center hole and again just kind of push it up toward the center just a little bit the reason i don't worry with these is we're about to come back and have another nail every five inches through each side anyway when we put the shingle on top okay so now we can take this end that has the extension on it and you'll see how that just fits right on top of that groove and so we can put that one in place set one nail come to the other side and these little lines make it real easy to to see if you're properly aligned come down to the far end check for what would normally be center and this time is a quarter inch off center you can see how when I'm nailing on this side I'm hitting good wood and again press this one up come back and catch the two centers theoretically there should be the correct number of nails attached to each of these ridge vents uh, but I always make sure to have a few extra with me uh, just in case something bends over or you know whatever may be the case um, you want a nail that's 
at a minimum two inches but you really need about two and a half to three inches and they do make roofing nails up to three inches that are regularly available at your local home supply store Okay, so theoretically, if I measured and figured correctly, this ridge cap should end somewhere in about this area, pretty close to where this last lap is on these shingles. So let's get this end set and then we'll see what we have down there. And within about an inch of where I said, so not bad. So you just, you don't ever want these shingles to end so close to this end that water could try to go through that way and get inside the house. And so we are in good shape over here. Okay, so now we've got all of our vents set. And so now we're gonna cut up some more ridge cap so that we can come over and put the shingles over the top of this, uh, which is largely just a cosmetic thing to make it look better, but it also helps protect where the shingles butt into each other. So first thing we've got to do is cut up a sufficient quantity of ridge cap. Um, each of these areas is five inches long. And so if you're just needing to know quantity, you know, we have 16 feet here at 12 inches. So that's 192 inches. So if you divide 192 by five, you get 39. So we need 39 pieces of ridge cap there's since these are three tabs there's three in each shingle so 39 divided by three is 13 so theoretically if i cut up 13 shingles i already have one cut right there if i cut 12 more shingles that would be the exact right quantity um i usually cut up an extra one just to have it ready to go so i don't have to stop and do something else but uh by counting it out I can then have the rest of this bundle in my truck for the next time that they're needed whereas if I went ahead and cut all of these up into ridge cap now I wouldn't have that option down the road And I also have this magnet, which makes 
getting nails picked up. Much easier process. age 51 anything that saves bending over more is certainly a welcome addition to my tool set back in 1991 I was gonna do roof work for a couple of weeks to put a little money in my pocket while I look for a real job. And here I am in 2020, still haven't found a real job. Now, I never would have guessed it beforehand, but for whatever reason, this is something that I love doing. Very satisfying to take something that is broken and fix it for somebody. And at the end of the day, to be able to look and see what I've done, just find that to be very rewarding. Okay, that's got some of the mess out of the way. So, let's start getting these ridge caps put on. It really doesn't matter a lot which direction you go. If you live in a house that's very wind exposed, you would rather go toward the direction the wind comes from just so that the the wind tends to skip off of the shingle instead of trying to go underneath the seam of the shingle we're going to come just maybe a eighth to a quarter of an inch past the end of the ridge vent just to make sure that it's overlapped and you can see how it just barely goes over the flange on each side and then again you can take that six inch cut and put it on that center line and you see right here it actually says nail line so you just kind of want to eyeball and get real close to that area and again try not to nail through the tar line it doesn't greatly matter which side of it you go on with the uh, ridge caps uh, but just best and you can see the head of the nail barely clipped it there no big deal but you want as much of that tar line adhering to the back of this shingle as possible and that's the reason why you don't want to really nail through the tar line okay so we we line it up on this side and then we can double check the six inch cut and then knock it out of place and realign it may notice as I nail these get it started you know, that one kind of set by itself but as you uh, get the nail almost all the way down you don't want to hit it real hard because you don't want to hit the head of the nail through the shingle and so go to a gentler tap once you have the nail almost all the way down hitting the head of the nail through the shingle is a large factor in causing shingles to blow off later on in the life of the roof if you have the nail set correctly 
much less likely to happen that's why anytime you do work with a nail gun you want to make real sure that you have the pressure set correctly where the head of the nail isn't blowing through the shingle the speed gain from using a nail gun is wonderful but if you have somebody operating the gun that doesn't pay attention to getting that nail set properly you're uh, really doing yourself a big disservice with your roof so that is going to cause problems down the road The reason a lot of these nails are being very reluctant to get started is this building is built on trusses which means that there's only a rafter every 24 inches instead of every 16 inches and that makes everything a lot bouncier especially up here at the uh, top end of the decking So getting the nail to start penetrating the decking can be a little bit of a challenge as you near each rafter it gets much simpler when you're out there between the two rafters definitely a big bounce factor going on This style of vent will ventilate significantly more air than that mesh style that was on here. Um, the opening is much larger on these and also the way that this lip is designed, I believe it's called the Venturi effect, that it causes it actually when wind comes up the roof, it causes it to actually actively draw air from the attic. I'm sure somebody with a lot more wisdom in that area could speak to that exactly um, but I just know this is a much more efficient ventilation system than that mesh is not even certain if they still make the mesh because this style has become so prevalent um, I would say probably 80% of the houses that have been built in the last 15 years or so that I've been around have had this kind of ventilation or it used to be a lot more random it had what's called turtle back vents power ventilators uh turbines, whirly birds, all kinds of options, but these are so good and so cost effective that uh, they've just about taken over. And again, I'm in Georgia, so my only roofing experience comes from Georgia, may be completely different wherever you are.
when you get within about a foot of the far end you want to turn one coming back the other direction once you get to where one shingle overlaps the tar line of the other shingle you're going to take two of your ridge caps and one of them so this is the exposed end you're going to cut it just this side of the tar line and then you're going to take one more and you're going to cut it at the five inch mark which is you know where the the color starts to change and where those eyelets are so you just basically want that part of the shingle that's the same color as the roof you're putting on and so you're going to take the one that still has the tar line on it put it coming this direction and then the one with no tar line on top of it and then we're going to put one nail in each of the four corners up about where that nail line is on the ridge vent and see so you have four tabs left over and I said I was going to cut one extra shingle so was pretty much right on on that estimate so I'm going to go ahead and pull these extra nails off the vent so that they don't sit here and try to rust or interfere with the roof system in any way not to mention they're perfectly good nails I can use somewhere else And so the very last thing I want to do now is just put a little caulk on those nail heads just to make sure there's no future problem with them trying to leak. The main thing you want with roof caulking is something that's going to stay flexible. Um, things like tar, tar is the worst, uh, but silicone and a lot of other types of caulking will not last long on the roof. This is the brand I use 98% of the time. Uh, it's a polyurethane that has good UV resistance and stays flexible for many years and that's important because on the roof everything gets so hot and so cold that it expands and contracts up on the roof line much more than anywhere else and so caulking will pull away if it's not flexible And so, we now have a leak-free ridge vent. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Please click the like button. And as always, the most important thing to remember on the roof is that Jesus loves you. Have a great day.